takeout orders or deliveries. Um, it's good, good Dominican food. And like when they, are they open late? The regular hours? Like what are they? Pretty much regular hours. You know the, mm. the regular hours. Sometimes on Broadway you get those places that are open so late. It's like. Wow. Yeah, no, no. It's it's really a, a place where people go and either you order food delivery, um, or it's a little bit like Canario, um, okay. your restaurant, um, or you know, you can sit and eat a little table. I don't know how well you're doing with the separation though. I know it's terrible. Right now, it's tough on all of them. I, I mean, the Canario, you can't sit there at, at all. It used to be little tables. Everybody's like, just take out. All right. Now, I don't know Skinny Dennis. Skinny Dennis. Oh, on Metropolitan Skinny, Avenue. Skinny, Skinny, Dennis, Skinny Dennis, I believe, was on the corner. Of? It's a small, narrow restaurant, and they had uh, music, country music. The corner of what, though? Uh, I don't remember. I just know that it's on the corner. It's a brick on the store corner. It, on the corner of what? <laughs> <laughs> just some corner somewhere in America. There's Skinny Dennis. <laughs> They've been there for a long time. <laughs> but we don't know what corner that they're. Like, Marie, if you had to find it, what corner would you go to? I'm going to tell you in a second. The one, the one where you hear country music coming out of, okay? Corner of Metropolitan and Bury, right. Corner of Metropolitan and Bury, right on the corner. Okay. <laughs> Let me look. And Bury, no, right no, on no, the left hand side. You, he's there for years. Years. Wait, 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 wait. That, oh, wait. One of those bars there is a problem. Um, uh -huh. Miss Kuonan might have something to say about them. Which one is that? Uh, the um, the one that you're talking about right now, the um, Skinny Dennis. She's she's in that mess that's two doors down with all the plants in the sidewalk. Ryan. And she's oh she's had fights with somebody on taking drinking on the sidewalk or something i don't know if it's the new place in between or the guys on the corner there was some issue over there i remember there was some scene you know, if um if eric shows up he would know what would i know oh eric is here oh eric are you here okay I so we're we're just sort of discussing what anybody knows about the um renewals Somehow I've lost the video here. Okay. Um, and one of them is Skinny Dennis, which is two doors down by, from Ryan's. And didn't she have some kind of battle going with one of those bars? Um, I think she had a problem with the with that club that was going to open and never opened. And wasn't wasn't that it? I don't think she had a. Wasn't there like stuff, stuff going on the sidewalk or something? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. I just remember some kind of craziness over there. She's not one to blow a bar up unless it's really out of hand. Okay. All right. So. So, so basically, we're okay with the renewals, right? Yes. Well, the only problem is what Steve brought up about Giando's. Yes. Mm -hmm. But because that is about the, the, the address. In, that's the address was incorrect. That's, is that correct, right? I, I think the address is correct. It's just, I think, believe what they did is they built, when I went back and looked at the lot, um, they built in front of them a building, mm -hmm. and they're behind them, and they spread across the whole lot. Mm -hmm. So they may have taken up all those addresses at one time that they have on their license, and then the building that was built on the same property towards the front has adopted that, uh, the four, what was it, 410? 499. No, 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 410. 420. 420. 420. 
Or 20, one. Right, because, 20, right. yeah, their liquor license states they're at 412 and 420 Kent Avenue. Their advertisements say that they're 400 Kent Avenue. If you, you know, look at their advertisements or where they're located. Right, so um, I don't know if, if you subdivide a lot with the same address, what what that makes happen? I don't know. That's a question we, we would have probably have to send to the SLA and ask. Yeah. But they did have this address for years that they have on their application. It's uh, it's not new. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I have no issue with any of the renewals. Except we don't have a quorum, so we can just chit chat about it. Uh, Arthur just called me. He's gonna be in the. 10 minutes. I right, well, we still need, you know, three more people, I guess. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what we have? One, two, three, four of us. Yeah. Now, Eric, we, before you got here, I was throwing your name around. We, including Arthur, we need two more. Eric? Yes. Eric? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh oh, I guess I froze. <clears throat> can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? I hear you. I can hear you. We can hear both of you. Tom? No, we lost Tom. All right, am I back? Yeah. Yes, you're back. All right. I don't know what just disappears every once in a while. So, Eric. Yes, sir. Oh, God. I was throwing your name around earlier because at a prior meeting of public safety, you came as a attendee and had to come in as an attendee. We now have another board member who's not on the committee as a participant. So I am wondering what the rules are about that. Uh, well, that's that's a Marie question, I guess. Well, no, I think it's a jury and Dialis question. Marie, whatever answer she gives, she'll have her head cut off. Uh, do you mean, do they count for quorum? I'm sorry, I missed no. you. You came to my meeting whenever it was, and they made you sit in the attendees box. Yes. Until you could be called upon, and you had to ask me, can I speak? Yes, yes that's correct. Right. Now we have a board member in our participants list who's not on the, this committee, who's not right. sitting in the attendee box asking for permission to speak. So I'm trying to figure out what are the rules? Are there any rules? Or are we just making them up as we go along well i think we've always done committee members first then um uh what do you call it ex uh ex officio or public members public members <laughs> no 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 no. Uh, any public members of a committee are part of the committee so they would have deference but um you know so it's committee members then other board members then public Yes. Right, but who goes in the, who goes in the participant box and who goes in the attendee box? Uh attendee, attendee box he goes too. I remember. Yeah, yeah because if I if cuz I've been to executive committee mem meetings by bylaws meetings and I I sign on as a uh, attendee. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, I agree with Eric. All right. 
so I believe I believe that the rule was changed today. So I'll have to get clarity upon that. Hmm. So I'm not putting I'm not going to put Marie on the spot. So okay. she, she was given instructions. So oh, all right. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Well, as a board member, I need to find out what my employees giving instructions are. So Good luck. don't don't they work for us? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marie, close your ears. <laughs> <laughs> don't, give, don't give her a heart attack. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how long I'm going to give people to show up. So uh, I don't think we're going to get a quorum. Was there oh. any, any discussion about Skinny Dennis? Skinny Dennis? Yeah, I discussed it with Eric. Where were you? I, 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 don't, I didn't hear him totally respond yet. He said he hadn't heard anything terrible or horrible. I mean, okay. I, could call, I could call up Ryan and ask her, but, you know. I can ask her her opinion, or she can bring it up at the full board meeting. Hmm. Because we always get like the third bite at the apple at the full board meeting. All right, let's see if she responds. So, um, Tom, once again, what was the biggest issue? Something that was outside, incorrect, with the skinny Dennis? I don't remember. I mean, because I don't go over to that part of town very often, but I just remember that in the early days of COVID, a lot of bars were setting up stuff on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. serving liquor, having bars outside. And I thought either the place right next to Ryan's or the place on the corner was one of those places. But I don't, I may have been mistaken because, you know, like Marie said, it's a place on the corner. There's a lot of places on corner that look the same. So, right, right. But this is. When you once you, when you go on Burry Street, down north. No, I know where this one is. So there's a, I'm just you know I don't know if 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 there was an issue and we can't figure it out tonight. You know, as far as I can say, none of the renewals are a problem. But I will call out Ryan at the main meeting and say, Ryan, what's you know is there an issue with this place? I just know that there were some corner places, particularly the one over by um, the EMS station. There's like a corner bar near there that um, on Metropolitan that dragged a lot of stuff onto the sidewalk way back in the beginning. Oh, Ryan is responding. I see bubbles on my phone screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Now, she's, you know, the bubbles while she's writing your message, you get the little bubbles. Uh. All right, little bubbles are coming. So I don't see any issue with any of the renewals. Okay. Uh, anybody else see any issues with any of the renewals? No. I do not. I am not fine. Right. I'm fine. We can't vote because there's not enough of us. So um, now the new ones, it looks like 130 Franklin is where Shay's Lounge and something called Magazine was before. It looks like just a different another bar going into the same space. Uh oh, Ryan gave up. Right. That's that is the place when you to the right of the laundromat when they open a restaurant. That used to be long time ago the Irish bar. That's the place. Shay's, Shay's Lounge. Right. That's correct. That's correct. That's the. Oh, I guess I was right. She doesn't have any issues with them anymore. The first day in the spring was a hot mess, but they've been good ever since. Okay. That's I thought it was them. All right. Okay, but I have like I mentioned before, Sante, uh, Mitzeli, he uh, contacted me and he was asking me because that's I believe this place and the next place over and the place across the street, one thirteen and one fifteen, is applying for legal license. So he asked me if we can be very careful to review those applications. Oh, well, Sante's here. He's here, Santi. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, she is here. Okay, great. Uh, and it's 130 Franklin? 
Yes. Jay's Lounge was in there, and then something very short-lived, I think it's called Magazine, was in there. Okay. Um, but the, the problem with the new ones, I pointed out to you early arrivers, was that Marie sent emails to all of the people who had applied, telling them, you know, that, Maria, what did you actually tell them? Marie? I tell them we received their application. And they need to come to the next meeting or send the questionnaire. And, but I didn't hear anything back from them. Okay. And there was one who said that um, they were absolutely not ready. They haven't even built out the place yet. So I, I asked if they weren't going to attend to let me know if they're postponing. And uh, it's, you know, that was it. Well, the one that's 130 and the one that's 145, those are existing restaurant bars. So the only ones that would need build out would be lavish. And I would think maybe lemons and olives, but none of them I are think here. It, I think it was lemons and olives. I, think I mean, the, one. It's fun. The, the, the attendee list, is there anybody here in the attendee yeah. list that's from any one of those bars? Raise your hand. Do the people in the attendee room hear us? Somebody wrote in the, um, says, may I speak about Franklin, please? Who? where? Where do you read that? Was, um, in my questions and answers, somebody by oh, the name. I can't, get that to, I can't get that to open. Oh, I go there. When, you're, okay. when you're ready, I, I'd love to say a couple of words about 130 Franklin. Sorry, I tried before, but I, I realized I was unmuted. Um, have you muted? Um, well, as you know, you know, we've been. Uh, um, I didn't say you were going to hear anything about it right now. We're still, the committee is still talking about okay. it. Okay. I'm just trying to see if anybody's raising their hand in the attendees list. Um, there's somebody named, there's the, Mr. Chan says he can hear us. And Francois Olivas is asking to speak about Franklin. Is that like the whole 130 Franklin? But does that mean, okay, is anybody in the attendee room representing any of the four new applicants? Is there anybody in there from My Kismet, Lavish Lifestyle, Lemons and Olives, or Teresa North Ninth? Okay, so they were all sent emails, correct, Marie? Yes. Marie? Yes. All right. So none of them showed up or responded. So we're, we, I would suggest that we can't approve any of them. Not that there's enough of us to vote on that, but as the chair, I have, you know, we set up new guidelines last meeting that they needed to come to our committee meeting virtually and none of them are here. So, okay. and they right. didn't send anything and signed, back. And sign the stipulation and at least sign the stipulations. And they didn't send in a postponement request. Although that one may have, Marie, you'll have to clean that up with lemons and olives. But I, you know, I would think we would not approve those three, four. Any discussion? I am second on on the on your own. Well, we can't vote. We have. Yeah, I know. I understand, vote. but but I am. I I support you. Okay. Yes, I agree also. Because Eric, we're... we've lost Eric. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, then we're done. And Arthur, the... Arthur. Arthur. Yes, he's here. Yes, Arthur. Yeah, he's on the on the again on no, the report. Put, put tell, the turn his microphone on. He needs to turn his microphone on. Arthur. Arthur. Josh. Arthur. He disappeared. Yes, yes. No, he's there. He's just not speaking. No, I'm not speaking. Yeah. That's Josh. Okay. Um. Josh, do you see any problems with any of the renewals that you know of? Sure. What's that? Do you see any problems with any of the renewals? No, I didn't. Okay. Arthur? 
Yes, Tom, I just got connected. Give me two minutes. I'll be right. All right. <laughs> All right, here's the, here's the information from um, Ryan. She says that um, he, thanks to COVID, skinny, whatever his name is, it's their best summer yet, best behaved summer yet. The crowds are very different than their normal people. So she has no problem with skinny. Okay, Josh. Yeah. How are you, Josh? I'm Arthur. Ready. I just want to get an opinion from Arthur. Then I'm going to say we've just we, we're you know we're it's five to seven. We don't have a quorum. It's like come on, Arthur. We we need one more. We have six at this moment. Yeah, but I don't want to be sitting here all night waiting to you know we're all okay with the renewals. Yes. The four new ones, they didn't respond, so we're not approving them, and we're done. That's true. That's right. You know? Can you put your camera on? You're still on the airport? What? And I talk at Arthur if he's on the airport, because last time when he was joining the meeting, he was on the airport. Well, his, his microphone isn't muted, so he must be doing something. I don't know what's going on. Well, now, now is his... Uh, the business is good for him lately. I'm sure it is, you know. I have no idea what he said. <laughs> All right, so I'll just go over this again. We have no problems with renewals, but Marie, we need to write to the SLA about Yondos to clarify their address so that the new apartment building is not part of their liquor license. <laughs> then I want liquor license in Schaefer Landing. And the new ones, no one responded or attended. Mm -hmm. so, what's going on no i would like to just ask uh, if we 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 done uh, with the renewal and now we uh, tom uh, you are going to say a few words about the new application i'm recommending we not approve any of them i don't want to talk about it's like you want to have a conversation about it you no, know, like, no. the only thing i would like to ask if it's possible that that's uh santa wants to say something for the future reference about 130 franklin well then let francois speak too let them all speak about it you know it's not like i haven't heard it before and i can't stop uh um yeah. Sante, because he's in our participant thing. He can just jump in wherever he wants. But I'm not. I'm trying. I have to no be... control over this meeting anymore. It's being controlled by some outside person. So. So, co chair, you can call on whoever you want. Bogdan? Yes, yes. Call on whoever you want. No, no. He's asking me if he's okay to give a. In permission that he can say a few words. That's but all. Then I'm saying as a co-chair, you can call on whoever you want. So, Sante, you have a few words. Please uh, just make that uh, short as possible. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's why I was staying quiet. I was trying to be respectful of whatever system oh you have. God. There is no system. Go for it, Santi. Okay, good. Uh, you know, you know that the, the community here, I'm only now speaking for myself. There is a block association. There is other people there as attendee. They love to say a few things. They're even not part of the block association, but they care about the Franklin Street, this entertainment corridor. Uh, Andrew and 30 Franklin has been a, a big nuisance that address. Uh, we already have battled extensively. Uh, we have regulated Andrew and 32. We have excluded the backyard of 132. Now we have Andrew and 30 that for two years has been impacted the life of neighbor. Loud music, uh, over hours, lights, they've been impacting literally, uh, visually, you know, intruding 
the privacy of the people, you know, smoking. So we, uh, we have big question about that. We have big question first because there are so many applications we just over the 500 foot rule already. And definitely, you know, we, whatever happened there, we have to exclude the use of the backyard entirely. We have built a legacy where we don't want to have backyard uh, commercial use in the backyard. Uh, 132 Franklin has signed an agreement with us. Oxomoco on Greenpoint has signed an agreement with the Block Association. And uh, we want to build in this legacy, Tom. And Tom and all the committee is very important. There is a very uh, active community here. And uh, uh, that's what I want to say. So I want you to remember this. I know that uh, you're not voting tonight, uh, but it's important that we keep this in mind that any applicant has to come back to us to communicate. They didn't post any, there is no notice. I know it's the Wild West lately, uh, it's, it's happening with the uh, land use, it's happening with the, uh, with the liquor license, you know very well. I know how difficult this is for you, but they, they don't even post notice. They post the notice one day before they come to the SLA committee. Or maybe one day before they go directly to their 500 foot rule uh, 500 foot uh, earring uh, directly at SLA. That's all. Well, I would suggest to the Milton Street Block Association that whoever your elected assembly person is and your state senator is the one that you need to go to. Because we have tried to get state regulation of backyards and the New York State Legislature won't do anything about backyard regulation. I know, you're right, Tom, you're right. Uh, and I don't know, you know, who your assembly person or senator is over there, but they need to, you know, uh, years ago, Joan Millman, who is over on Smith Street, um, Carroll Gardens, I mean, that, that whole Smith Street thing, everybody has a backyard there and it was totally out of control. And they try to get it under control and she tried to get legislation and you know get it in backyard regulation and it went nowhere um and the only way we can force it is by getting them to sign a stipulation which is why now because of this madness that is covid we're requiring them to when they send in because all the sla requires is that they tell the community board they're applying that's all they have to do that's they and that's all they got to do we have our own application and then there was no way to hold meetings. So now our new thing is they're supposed to come to this WebEx meeting. And if they don't, we're not approving them because we're not discussing the stipulations because one of the stipulations is the backyard use. No one's coming to discuss them anymore. Um, and then we have to basically say to the SLA, we're not approving them. And hopefully the SLA asks us, why are you not approving them? Because they have, you know, they sort of, they're like, I don't know, two or three months behind on whatever they're doing. Yeah, so. uh, Tom, uh, you are, I agree with you. I know the difficulty uh, and I know uh, that this committee is doing all the best, how difficult this is. What I'm trying but, to say- But you people keep a, electing assembly people and senators who don't do anything. Uh, I, I know, you know, I'm just an immigrant uh, recently has become a citizen. Uh, maybe you have done more of these battles. So I didn't even have to deal with this stuff uh, no long ago. So I'm trying to, uh, to be uh, part and be very committed as much as I can. I have no conflict of interest, except that uh, I've lived here, I'm a resident. I like diversity in, in our neighborhood. I believe that is important. because It is very easy for, it's a multiple issue here. We're losing all diversity. They all wanna become bar and restaurant. So you're right, you know, that's something that has to happen at state level. But right now we have to be creative. And I believe this community has been very creative by trying to force this applicant to sign agreement with the community so the community could have less impact. And, and I, I ask if this committee can really collaborate because that's what this committee has been looking for for a long time. Community in which they want to participate through this process, you know, and, uh, and we have demonstrated to want that. Uh, and we went up to the SLA meeting, we went to the public hearing at SLA with the community, we poster and we have negotiated. You know, but now with COVID is even more difficult because, you know, how do we do? People is taking advantages, you know, the business should stay alive, that they are individuals, small business, they are disappearing. And strangely enough, we have other more bars that they say they have difficulty to operate. How is that possible? 
you know so you know there i i don't know exactly but i want to voice this and i'm i want this to become a common knowledge at, at this committee that there is a community here at least and frankly i don't know on the south side i don't know i don't live there but i'm 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 a community board member i'm very committed and there is a community here is very committed we care about that's all Okay, but you got to get your elected officials to do do what needs to be done. I mean, absolutely, and I, I know that's so many of our so many of our committee meeting committee battles with liquor licenses has been elected officials are telling the SLA let these people open, and then we're like after the fact, you know. Absolutely, you know our person have been committed for this for quality of life, and I'm not against a, a restaurant or a bar, but I, I, we need a ratio. We need a, you know some balance, and yeah, we're losing the balance even more, you know. And uh, the, you know there were three women business here. Like you have another application, ninety nine Franklin. This was a four hundred square feet woman business had to close down. So you close down, and two months after, there is a bar that tell us on a 500 square feet is going to be a restaurant. So this is across the street from 130. Yeah, but, the, but your elected officials believe that I'm, Brooklyn is the borough of entertainment. And that's what I've been trying for a while. You read the article. You know, and somehow our block association, these residents, they kind of show up, uh, yes, operating locally, creating opposition locally, but we're not opposed, you know. Uh, to, but we need to have some ratio with some parameters. We are losing any parameters here. Even the, the 500 foot rule is completely disregarded. Then you can tell me more about this okay. because probably. Let me explain something about the 500 foot rule. 500 okay. foot rule just triggers a meeting at, and if uh, the New York State Liquor Authority orders that uh, license to go under that regulation. It doesn't exclude them. All it does is says they have to have a public meeting. And sure. It's held, at, it's held at, you know, the, I don't know where they're being held now virtually, but they used to have them at, in Harlem. But um, it doesn't exclude them. Everyone thinks that that's the reality, but it's not. So Absolutely. if you're going to ask for a 500 foot hearing because there's too close proximity, you have to have a good case to, for them to turn it down. And that's how you guys were able to make your case the last time. So every instance where something like this comes up, that has to be your approach. So um, Absolutely. If, even if this application is denied by the community board, we can request that they have the 500 foot hearing if they're subject to that. That can be put into the resolution. Okay, so I just wanted to make that clear because everyone says, oh, they can't open. No, you go no, to Manhattan, there's a restaurant right next to each other. Restaurant row, they all have liquor licenses. It's just that if there's a an issue, they, if they, it can be brought out at, at that public hearing. I, I agree. The, the, the last senator had talked about strengthening the rules about what is a um, public need for another liquor license. And it's basically really didn't strengthen that question either. So the restaurant uh, and bar business is a, a big one. So it's a it's a go ongoing battle. But these four applications today haven't responded to us to come to our meeting today. So we're not recommending that they be approved. Um, and it will be that they didn't come to our meeting, that they haven't signed the stipulation that we asked to be accompanying the um, community board application, and we have not had an opportunity to discuss with them their use of their outdoor space. Um, and that way it triggers the, the SLA if they end up going up there to discuss it, for them to ask the same questions about hours, about outdoor space limitations, um, and about the, working with the community board. Tom, can I ask you a question to you and all the committee? Because all of a sudden, you know, we see this notice that they are not there and all of a sudden appear, right, last minute. And you know, you, you said many, many times, you know, people take advantage of that. Um, what happened with 113 uh, um, Franklin, corner of Greenpoint Avenue, that all of a sudden I saw the other days and Francois, she's also an attendee, she sent me a picture and there was a, a notice that they 
actually at, they were attending the 500 foot uh, earring directly at SLA. Did they kind of um, skip the process through uh, CB1 through your committee or they were approved by your committee? I send the wanna, picture. If you want to pay me my salary, I can spend 24 hours a day going through all this crap. When was it on the calendar? Do you have any idea? No, no, that's 115 something. The address was 115. 113. I send you a picture, Bogdan. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Yes, it was before, yes. So maybe so when? Can, I believe when? in I believe was in a, not in a uh, if not blah, 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 or maybe November 8. I don't have a release on me right now. As long as you're all aware that the mayor has cut the community board budget down to like one and a half employees. So. When did you think it was, Brandon? Uh, I am checking myself too. Uh, maybe November 8th. Oh my God. I'm going through my magic November list. November 10th, I mean. Oh, no, no. no. Um, yes, November. I have that number five on November ten meeting. November ten meeting number five on New Lincoln Line. So then that went to the full board. And we denied all of them. We denied except the the other that was. Uh, uh, we denied every body except the. Authentic pierogies and those additional four that they have just uh, were changing method of operation. Yeah, we recommend they all be denied except for the four changing their method of operation. Yes, that's that's the answer to to to. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to find the minutes. <laughs> uh, so Bogdan, were you saying that the 113 Franklin? Uh, yes. Practically, they bypass uh, community board and went directly to SLA, and they went to the 500 foot uh, area. Once I, again, I right. think, let me explain something they about the, they the SLA. They pr they promote their application. Thirty days, they act on it. And and the thing is, we have more than thirty days when we need to do our review. Right, because we have to have our committee meeting, and then the full board meeting, and then mm -hmm. get it up to them. And the 30 days has gone by. Now, there are some bars jump ahead on their calendar. I don't know how Let that me, happens. If they had the 500 foot hearing, when was that? Uh, there is a picture I send. I can send it no, to you. No, just tell me if you have it. What does it say? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Date of hearing December 15, 2020. I can give you the serial number. Okay, no, right. if, if it's December 15th, let's see if we can get our. Recommendation to them without without concerns. That's all. We had we told them we were we disapproved all of them on our meeting of the tenth. When do we meet? The tenth. Yeah, the tenth. Yeah, so so we have to bring this to their attention that there's right. an issue. Okay, that's all. Right. So, so, the, so. it was probably crossed in the mail because we had a meeting on the tenth. They had a meeting on the fifteenth. So, to clarify that, we send them on November 12, 10, That's we do not approve them, and they. Right, but that's fogged, and that was a meeting. That was that meeting that went late at night. Marie had to go home, come in the next morning, yes, yes. type up the report, get it in the mail. And meanwhile, the bar has its thousands of dollars an hour attorney going right to no, no. them. Because what I, absolutely, Tom, what I try to say on their notice, it says November 6th on the notice. So they had the hearing before our meeting on the notice. What Sun takes. Okay. okay. Well, the SLA does what it does. Yeah, right. That is exactly what you're saying before. Terry, they don't say we cannot beat that. So they decide they're going to have 500 foot hearing before our meeting on the 10. Which was really fast, so they must know somebody. All we can do is reach out to them. We have a contact and let's see what we can do. That's, yep. Yep. that's the best. Yep. 
and this was historically i mean it hasn't been there there was a real estate while there was trying it was the green pointer the big uh, tower that was built on the waterfront and so the corner from a bar became the real estate uh, to sell the unit whatever and i believe uh, that's it. They probably sold everything, or maybe uh, they didn't sell anything. I don't know. What happened? The, now it's ready to be torn. Into the real another. estate office across the street from me in an entirely commercial, a residential block has applied for a liquor license. Okay. Those are the <laughs> only businesses that are coming into the neighborhood are bars. Now, unfortunately, back in the 50s, every single corner location in my neighborhood was a club or a bar. So it's like, well, on Nassau, used four, you used to have four bars on every corner. On Nassau Avenue, on Nassau Avenue, every corner going down Nassau Avenue was bar. Yep. So every uh, Leonard on uh, Eggford was two, another two, another two. Every corner was two bars. When you have the Amber House was a bar. When you have the Grocery Street on Leonard was a bar. I understand, but I believe, uh, and I'm with you on that, but I believe what is very important, and I'm here, uh, all of us, beyond uh, your committee, beyond my other committee, of which I vote note on a, on a lot of issues that I believe are controversial, I believe the difference is that while people maybe were passively accepting certain things, the fact that we are here, part of this committee, the fact that we are part of a community board is because maybe we are uh, uh, caring about uh, other issue and we active participant and we can make changes. We made changes sometime. Uh, unfortunately, it, it requires a lot of work, a lot of energy, but I believe we're already doing, just having this conversation, you know? And, All right, and but I want this story. meeting to end. We've already decided okay. what we're doing. Okay. So I have a life. So, Somebody else want to say something? I'm assuming that was there. On All right, well, I don't want to have hours and hours and hours about Franklin Street. I know what your position is about Franklin okay. Street. I've heard it okay. over and over, and I'm not going to change what's going on. Your elected officials are supporting the entertainment business and the opening of bars. They're not supporting small businesses. Yes, but you can work with the community i can't do anything community. i'm a volunteer i have a full-time job and there's a one and a half employees at the board office we all and, have a full-time job Tom. and the you know that we are recommending that they not be approved that's all we can do but also sending back to the organized community so they can have also dialogue sometimes that's maybe it's not that we want to reject everybody let's understand that's all. We've always had that position. I know. Let's not forget. You asked for meetings with the nightlife mayor. She wasn't come to meetings with us. We have tried all kinds of things. Um, you know, so we, I've, enough. Now there was one, there's, everybody's in there desperately wanting to speak. I do not want long speeches about Franklin Street. I know about Franklin Street. So Marie, let Francois speak, but you got three minutes. Three minutes for each person. Marie, let uh, Miss Francois Olivas wants to speak. Marie. Hi, I forgot to mute myself. She's on. Okay, three minutes. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. So I just want to speak about Franklin Street and the small businesses. I do want to speak to, um, I think it's 99 Franklin, which used to be a woman owned small business. Um, you know, I think it's a much bigger conversation about the community that we really want to create and foster go forward. Um, over close to a million women have um, been pushed out of the workforce because of COVID-19. And to turn our small businesses that are women owned into bars is just further displacing women um, and also usually women who are very active in the community, out of um, places to build their dreams. And I think that is something that Brooklyn previously had been really, really known for, um, were our small businesses and the makers movement. And in terms of uh, the one that on 99 Franklin, I think it's really important for the SLA committee here to note that when that was a bar called Lulu's, um, 
There were no other bars or restaurants on the block. Currently, now there is a bar called Ramona's and another bar restaurant on the corner. So that would allow for three bars to basically take up the entire block. Um, Tom, I hear you where you say we have to talk to our elected officials, but I also think that this forum um, it's it's not a be forum. For it's a committee meeting to review application. I take my time back, please. I would like my time back. Thank you. I'm so for this committee meeting to be an opportunity for the community to have a collective conversation. Um, so that's all I'm here to say. I think there are a lot of opinions and I know that you hear it, but it's also, you know, you volunteer for the position. So you know, I hope that you would continue to be open to hearing um, what the community has to say instead of berating us and telling us that um, you're tired of hearing it. Thank you. Well, because I'm not going to go there. Marie, um, uh, let's, let's see. Anna Sadlack, I think it is. Marie? Yeah, Anna, you're mm -hmm. unmuted. Yes, hi. Um, I'm going to take just one minute, Tom. You talking about what your neighborhood or your street used to be in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s is not really relevant. The world is changing. Let's make this a better place. It's not a forum, but maybe if you start saying no collectively, we're going to be heard as a community. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Okay, anybody on the committee want to say anything? Okay, let me see the Milton Street Block Association. Um, do, have you got businesses as a part of your block association? So you're both like a residential and a commercial association. And then um, maybe you can get some business people to support you and what's going on um to make it a better you know support the businesses that are there from getting forced out to become bars has, has that been part of the work actually tom i we we are in contact uh, francois oliva used to have a storefront on franklin you know of course uh, the more bar comes the more people like francois can't afford to pay the rent the bars uh, on so i believe uh, our function here uh, is like trying to find a way that we can uh, you see, the 500 foot rule could help to regulate, right? Already, the fortunate uh, landlord have the three bars, they get more rent. But then the system automatically will self regulate the moment we limit the number of licenses. And the landlord, if they want to rent it to some other businesses, they're going to have to come to a certain. Right. Well, the state, the state is never going to limit the number of licenses. They are making a lot of money off liquor licenses. So and then we're going to have to battle. But to respond to what you asked me, yes, it's like there is almost the brave that you have two places. They have to close one because the landlord was uh, not very clement during this hard time of COVID, but it's still have a place at the corner, just across the street, 113. I went over there, I spoke with her. She said, you know what? I completely with you guys. I care about quality of life. I care, I care when I came here 10, 12 years ago, and we created a series of small business, women, you know, uh, other individual, and their lively uh, 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 presence of different diverse business uh, help their business. And so then uh, there is an altar. Alter, uh, those two guys there, which, you know, we are friends, uh, you know, I live around the corner from them, you know, Tom, they used to have a place on the uh, clothing store on Graham Avenue, on Graham Avenue, Graham Avenue. Yeah, it's, gone. Gone, it's gone, but they still have this one in Greenpoint next to uh, a two storefront next to uh, Andrew and Ferdy Franklin. They don't want to have a bar. They, they care and they're in support, but we have other business. They are in support of non-bar business. They want to have a lively during the day. They want to have other business, people walking from a store to another, not people coming and vomiting. No, no, I, I have been doing community block association stuff for like 40 years. I believe you. And it has to be from the top. There has to be support from the people that we keep voting into office to do something. The borough president, whoever the new borough president is, can't be going behind community board backs and approving giant dance venues for liquor licenses 
when the when the block when the committee of the community board has said no to them the uh state senator and the assemblymen have to be held to say to the state liquor authority you need to always listen to the community board recommendations not sort of just you know look at it one way and go a different direction that's the frustration is that the state and the borough-wide officials they're happy to have these bars and restaurants because they you know i don't know what their thing is with small businesses and as for women-owned things i don't know the the mayor's office of minority and women-owned businesses i don't know whether they've been asked to try and support women's businesses on that block or not that's that's a much bigger issue than this committee that has to review liquor licenses right now we're trying to get them back into signing the stipulations but we can't get them to show up a meeting to sign a stipulation we can't do that so we're now taking the position you don't show up you don't post you don't get signatures and you don't sign the stipulations we're going to recommend not to be approved but whether the liquor authority is going to care or not i don't know that's that's where we're stuck right now. You know, I know it's a tedious job, Tom. I recognize that. I'm sorry sometimes, you know, but as a member of the community, uh, maybe I speak too much that we are passionate about. And I know you have a very tedious job. To I know, but have you seen any of your elected officials show up at a community board meeting to hear this? Yeah, they so don't. Say, say it again. Sure. Have you seen your elected officials show up at a community board to hear what you have to say? I agree. And did you see me calling uh, when it was about certain development, saying where are our uh, uh, official? You heard me publicly, right, Tom? Well, that's so, the frustration you know, right now. So, uh, so I understand that. But I believe together, together, and that's what the people where he has attendee, and there's many other would would be unnecessary because you would not like to have other forty people. That's what they are calling to you. To, to look at this holistically, because the problem, yes, is the license, is the business, is the woman, is the diversity from our neighbor. It's a complex holistically. And that's our mission, I believe, as a board member. I mean, and if we don't create this resistance, of course, no public official is going to do anything. And maybe uh, less create this resistance, but it can be just uh, from the citizen. It can be, I believe we have an opportunity as a community board, as a member, as a committee to look, work together on this. Even now, it's harder time for a lot of people and people take advantage. It's kind of a predatory system. It is land use. Look, there are a few things that didn't stop. Development, uh, up zoning, and you know how I've been open and, and voice out and vote against it, up zoning and legal license is this the future i don't see as a, a a sustainable future but and sorry that's a lot of uh, it's a lot. but i think we are voting not to approve we're not recommending oh, no, i know i know no. I, I believe that it be SLAL committee and the SL committee however will approve them so that's the problem that's what the problem is, where to look at, why you have to look at the assembly and the state and why is the SLA committee not listening to our recommendations? Anyway. Or why are elected officials not listening, you know? Yeah, why? And, and, and I don't wanna like throw the whole, we had a woman who had an antique store who came to us for a liquor license for her antique store because that was how she was gonna keep it open. Um, we, we, we get liquor license applications from everybody because it seems that the only way in New York right now to be able to pay your bills is to be able to sell alcohol because of the incredible write-up you can get from selling alcohol. Um, there has to be a better business model now. I don't know um, which of the candidates for borough president are talking about commercial rent control or anything like that, but that's, you know, in support of women and minority owned businesses. And we have to start having that next year is the big election locally. We, we survived the presidential election. Now it's the local election to like start calling out some of these people um, to be responsible to developing, you know, neighborhoods that are uh, multifaceted. I mean, you walk around neighborhoods in Manhattan now, there's nothing. You know the bars and restaurants have closed and the shops that they forced out are gone a long time ago so it's got a lot of empty storefronts so 
I don't know how to deal with that. But we're recommending non-approval of all of the new licenses this, at this time. We recommended the non-approval of all the new licenses at the last meeting. So, um, and we'll just have to be clear about that now the non-approval is because we did not get an appearance by the applicant. They did not complete the stipulation that we attached to our application. They did not come to present what their hours and what kind of business they were going to have. And another thing that we're concerned about is local hiring. We've had them come in and say, oh, we just hire people off Craigslist. We're like, no, 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 you got to go to a local community organization and hire people who need jobs from those community organizations. So a lot of pieces that we keep trying to make happen here. But uh, I don't know, that's where it is. Uh, anybody else in the crowd? So that's the position I'm gonna take at the full board meeting about all the applications this month. Anybody on the committee have any kind of motion or anything? I mean, we really don't have enough of us to do anything, but Right. I think I think we're done. Yes, Tom. Arthur. Yes, I'm here. I mean, yes, yes. Eric? Thank you, Tom. Julia, are we done? I believe that yeah. so uh, I believe there was a woman actually that owns a store, Bethany. I saw a message that appeared. All right, I'm in the uh, question and answer thing. Um, there's so many boxes in web in WebEx. I never. There's the participants. There's there the Q and A. Bethany. And she owns a store almost. Yeah, but I don't see her in any of the lists. Oh wow! Up here. Let me see. I see her. I see her name, but I don't see her raising her hand or anything. Well, she wrote in the chat. I am here Which, and a business wait, where's owner. Where's the chat? There's so many street. boxes. Woman owned. I just had one. Where's the oh, chat, Marie? God, I've got questions and answers. Uh, I've got the bottom the right. The chat. Tom, Tom, next at the bottom on the right hand side, it says chat. There's yeah. so many boxes on this stupid WebEx. What a piece of crap it is. She's, she's just basically is just say stating the same thing. Uh, would be great to ever speak. Uh, I just saw probably she, she just calls her store now, uh, not being a bar. Uh, maybe she'd love to say something. It would be great to well, hear. Oh, I see know. in the ch Oh, the chat. Okay, let's see. Lauren Chuck, Stryker, right. she said, I, had a, I had a business on Franklin Street. I got it. I see it. Right. Does she want to speak or is she just telling me? She, oh, may I speak? Okay. I found it. She already knows. All right, Marie, let her speak. That'd be a better way to do this, though. I have to, have to find all the attendees and see if I can. I know there's Q&A, there's chat. Is it do you want to speak? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Tom. This is Bethany. I do own Home of the Brave. I'm here on Franklin Street in Greenpoint. And I just wanted to say that as a business owner, I've been here for 10 years. I've owned two businesses, and I'm also a long-term resident of 20 years here. And I, I think like many of us, we're not quite sure how to like provide support, but we definitely would like to, many of us, and I agree with you about the elected officials, but there's a big roadblock. So how do we overcome that? to turn all of Franklin Street into a bar scene is dangerous for the community. There's so many young families that live here with children. There's the elderly. And on top of it, it just makes for an environment that is not right for the prosperity of a community when there's one like-minded business taking over. It's, it's not the right thing to do. And there's no future for Greenpoint if we don't actually take a stand and figure out how to collectively move forward and make real changes instead of just, you know, not really having the real education on how to do that. Okay. Um, it's a rolling problem that's been going through New York forever. It rolled up from Chambers Street, it rolled up to Canal Street, it rolled up into the West Village, it rolled up to the Upper West. West. I remember when there used to just be bakeries and shoe stores on Columbus Avenue, and then it became the most expensive street for retail in America. And now it's all restaurants that are closed because um, uh, it, it's just the nature of the beast. And I I'm, I'm, don't know how to solve that problem. I was the head of a block and merchants association for like six years on a, and watched, you know, every storefront either become a bar or an adult video store. We haven't gotten adult, adult video stores, thank goodness. Um, that's usually the other option. Um, 
and I don't know if the, the North Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce is a vehicle to do this, um, to try and figure out a way to support small businesses. But again, you, I think you need to get your borough president candidates, some of whom are your council members who have appointed most of the community board members to be called out to some kind of neighborhood meeting about what we can do to save local business. Um, you know, the Economic Development Committee of Community Board One, um, I don't know who's co-chairing that committee or not, but you know, you have the competing interests of the large um, commercial buildings I wanna build and bring in office employees and then the small businesses, you know, the whole the battle between keeping ACME uh, here but they want to build an office building with it so you want to keep the small business but then you get a giant office building it's that that weird tension that's going on um i don't know what the solution is believe this committee has tried to deal with all these things at the best way we can and now we're at the point of just saying no 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 and another fear about doing no 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 is that at a certain point the the sla will just say that board one just votes no on everything so we're just not going to even listen to anything they say so you yeah, sort of have to watch that as well. Um, but maybe Tom, um, uh, as, a, as a committee, your report, uh, can we include more uh, this input for the community? Like tonight, uh, for example, Bethany and Francois, we could have other, uh, that they are, they've been part of other business in the community. They actually, they are raising concern and maybe bringing this also through community board where we're gonna start some communication and start hammering our public officials so we don't lose memory of this and, and and this moment this forum and i know it's not a forum i wish we had more forum where you know we could express this concern for our community but uh, at least we make statement we keep records of this and we officialize them by keep uh, sending this notice to the public official but from the sla committee uh, which is not there just to process license. It's also there to collect uh, input from the community in relation to license. So what more license can create for the community? All right, well, let me, uh, I, don't know, I, I, just, I want to wrap up this meeting. Um, okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, more people voted for a new assembly person than a old assembly person in North Brooklyn. I don't know how anybody voted but I haven't seen that assembly person's position on this issue at all. And I would think that would be a person that needs to be called out to call a forum. She's gonna be coming into her new office the beginning of the year. I have absolutely, you're, you've, you've muted yourself. Oh, sorry, I, I spoke before. No, I, I tried to call her, but she didn't return my call. Um, right. I well, want to understand how she felt about this. Because uh, this work at, at, at the state level hasn't been done in 40 years. <laughs> so maybe this is the time to start uh, oiling the machine there and see. Well, but the, I don't, I don't want to get into the progressive versus the regular whatever, but you know, sure. a lot of energy has been expended by people who are involved in politics on transparency of the county organization and not a lot of energy on what the small people on the street who are trying to keep their businesses open need absolutely so i don't know how to get that to happen but you're going to get a new assembly person and she needs to be said we need a forum assembly person on how the sla can support us in having more diverse businesses than not just a liquor license in every storefront so you know she doesn't call me back either so i'm not worried about you know throwing her out there for you guys to make come to a meeting so. no, no, no. <laughs> But Tom, uh, what, my request, uh, fine, I'll let you close the meeting. Uh, can we make more official in your report that, that there's been input from the community and and bring it, and we can bring this also to the our general uh, larger public meeting uh, a community board? Uh, well, I have to make the report at the larger public meeting, and then Marie has to write the letter from the minutes that come out of that. So, all right. Okay, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Okay, Josh got logged out for some reason or other, Marie. He can't get back in. I don't Marie? know why. All right, well, 
I think I, I think we've done the best we can for tonight. It's been an hour, so I will do my report for the full board. When is the full board meeting anyway, Marie? I believe it's, uh, is it the 12th of January? January 12th, and the next SLA meeting is the 26th. But now, from this point forward, when they send in their 30-day notice, Marie sends an email back to them saying they have to complete the questionnaire, sign the stipulations, and show up at our committee meeting. Otherwise, they're not getting to be, we're not making a rec recommendation of approval. So that's our new thing. Until we get a big enough room that we can all sit in safely spaced to have like actual hearings on this. So we need a gigantic auditorium that's for free. <laughs> With everybody sitting six seats apart and far apart from each other, and then we can do this. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Merry Happy Christmas. holiday week, everybody. Enjoy the week. Christmas, Kwanzaa. What's that other one with the poll? Um, the Festivus. Fest one. Fest Festivus, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> Festivus. <laughs> okay, thank you guys again. Thank, thank you, you everybody. everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy New Year. Yes. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, all of you. Uh, thank you. Where am I? I'm like mad at you.